This is me, the Undead Viking, and I have here with me Mint Condition Comics. Now, Mint Condition Comics is a brand new card game uh, made by the same people who brought you too many poops. Uh, you can go ahead and check out that video of mine. Uh, I did that a while ago. Uh, uh, instead of having a bunch of cats who possibly poop too much, in, instead in Mint Condition Comics, uh, each player is going to take on the role of a comic collector who is going to be trying as hard as they can to collect the best set of comics possible in comparison to the other players. And whoever gets the best set of comics, the best collection, uh, will end up being the winner. Um, so, uh, like it or not, um, like the board gaming hobby uh, is, is definitely on the, uh, I, I don't want to say outskirts, but it's, it's considered to be uh, you know, a geeky hobby. I mean, Board Game Geek is a, is the, the the largest website in the world. You know, it's considered to be kind of uh, on the edge. You know, as far as that's concerned. Um, and so, comic collecting and reading comics, even though it is more popular now with all the Marvel movies and DC movies that have been coming out, um, definitely uh, you are a situation there where um, people tend to think of uh, comic book collecting or people that read comics as, you know, just kind of being on the fringe or whatever. And I was a big comic book collector. Uh, I got into reading comics with an old, old, old Spider-Man comic uh, that I found at my grandpa's house one day. And then I just started, you know, not like really collecting comics, but I mean, like, I, whenever I was at like a, a Benjamin Franklin or at um, like a grocery store or something like that, um, there used to be um, these like uh, these, these turnstile things. I don't know how to describe it, but basically like a rack, a comic book rack that you could uh, flip through and you could pick and choose uh, the cool comics. Now there, that was before there was ever really a comic book store um, in my in my area, and I remember I started uh, reading these, and then I was actually realizing that like you know like number whatever 85 of Spider-Man, number 86 would continue the story, and 87 would continue the story. And so whenever my uh, mother would go to uh, like the grocery store or Benjamin Franklin or whatever, I would immediately head over to that comic book rack and and try to find like the newest Spider-Man comic or or the um, the newest Fantastic Four or what have you, and uh, try to convince my mother to buy those for me. Um, it wasn't until like many years later that I like missed a comic and I desperately wanted it. And um, my mother called around and she found out that these guys were running a comic book store uh, out of uh, the garage. And I remember uh, this place called Comic Book Junction, a place that still exists today. It isn't in the garage anymore. It's, it's, it's this awesome comic book store uh, in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, to this day, like, I, I still pop in there, uh, mostly because it's, like, right next door to the place where I get my tattoos, but, I mean, uh, for the longest time, even after I stopped collecting, uh, monthly comics, I picked up all my trade paperbacks and my graphic novels there. And, um, and, and so, but as, uh, collectors go, and collecting is a hobby, definitely, um, my, um, uh, my, my, my focus of my collection and what I collect has definitely changed. Uh, you know, I used to be I collected comics, then I collected uh, miniatures, um, then I started collecting board games. And I still kind of collect all three of those things in some way, shape, or form um, in, in some way. I mean, you know, I collect books and everything. But I mean, it's just one of those things where I think... Um, the collecting bug is something that people have or they don't, right? And I think people, most people have it in some way. Um, it's just the focus of that collecting uh, goes in some direction. Anyway, regardless to anything, the reason I told you that kind of boring story, and I do apologize for that, is the fact that like Mint Condition Comics actually takes the process of collecting comics and condenses it very, very well uh, into a uh, into a very, very quickly taught and quickly played uh, card game. And it really um, makes a lot of sense, if you will. Like the theme uh, is mirrored, mirrored in the mechanisms very well. And when things like that happen, I really, really enjoy it. But let me show you how uh, Mint Condition Comics is played, and then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Let's learn how to play uh, Mint Condition Comics. Now, I've gone ahead and set up the game. The setup is pretty much the same, depending, uh, regardless to the number of players that you have. Um, the biggest difference is that the um, there's going to be like more cards as far as the trade cards are available. Uh, they're going to be out here. Um, if there's less players, you're going to take cards out of this deck because that deck determines um, uh, the pick piles and also determines 
uh, how long the round lasts. Um, this game is played over a series of rounds. Uh, you score the points for each round, and then whoever scores the most points over the process of three rounds uh, will win the game. So, uh, a couple things. Uh, these are like the collection cards. So, like um, the Captain Impossible card. If you can see there, you know, it's like one one of these cards with zero, and so on and so forth. Up and up down to you get to the very top. If you have all six, um, they're going to be worth 25 total points at the end of the game. Um, every round, you will pick randomly. You'll, you'll shuffle these six up, and you'll pick one of those cards as being the hot comic. Uh, whoever gets the most of those comics in a given round will get some bonus victory points at the end of that round. Um, each person will also get a secret power card. Uh, secret power cards, um, you know, I'm just going to show you a few of them. Without knowing the rules completely, it might, it, it won't make a lot of sense, but uh, trade any one comic from your collection for any one comic in the comic shop, so, so on and so forth. These are just ways that people have that they're going to use them to break the rules in some way. You'll get one of those per round, and you get to be able to use that once per round. Don't forget about the secret power. Uh, I mean, because once you're, the round's over, you give the card up, and you know, unfortunately, like, you'll be in a situation where if you didn't use it, you'll be like, oh, I should have used that. So make sure you use it up. Uh, it doesn't do any good just sitting in front of you uh, face down. Um, there is also going to be a round bonus. Um, each round will have uh, some sort of special way that it's going to be um, uh, some victory points. So here's the Humble Collector, player with the least total comics, player with the most total comics, player with the most comics of any one series, so on and so forth. And then if people tie for that, you will just divide down the bonus victory points and, and equal, uh, you know, distribute those evenly uh, amongst those players that tie. All right. Uh, so, you don't start with any comics to begin with. You're, people are like, well, what, what do you mean? I'm a collector. I don't make comics. Don't worry. You will gather comics very quickly, and you'll be trading comics with uh, the... Uh, comic book store here that they have the available and you'll also be going through the pick piles which are these face down comics I want to take a moment just to point out that notice how when I first saw uh, these cards I was like wow it's like there's something wrong with each one of these cards and I realized no this is like the folded over plastic bag and the piece of tape that's holding uh, the comic in and that could even be the uh, like the white backboard uh, that, that you put in each one of your comics. If you've collected comics, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, but anyway, so uh, if you have like less number of players, you're going to take some of these comics out and get rid of them. That's a very important uh, factor because of the fact that after you've played the game a couple times, you're going to learn the game and you're going to learn, um, you know, what to, you're expecting as far as uh, the different uh, like cards coming out. And if you have just randomly taken out, you know, 12 cards out of that deck, uh, you you can't count on certain cards showing up. Uh, you might notice that all these different cards that come from these separate uh, comic types that are located up here, um, you'll have use, seize, or do I have a rare? Yeah, there's a rare right there. Um, those are the three different types of cards, you know, rare, common, or uncommon. Those are important when it comes time to trade. If you're trading with the comic shop, you can trade two, this like says right there, two of any one of equal or higher rarity for one comic out of there, or you can trade one of any two of lower rarity. So, makes sense, right? Uh, you have to trade two of less quality for something higher. You can trade one higher for two of less quality. Uh, it makes sense. That's why I like that secret power of being able to trade any one comic for any one comic uh, comes in handy and is important in that situation. All right, um, you'll also notice some of these will even have bonus victory points, like this one says plus two victory points on there. Um, I didn't get any anthologies out here, but I'll talk about anthologies here in just a quick moment. Uh, each person's turn consists of three things. You're going to do a trade phase, which we can't like technically do because we don't have any comics right now. You're going to do a pick phase, which is uh, picking uh, of these of these decks over here, and then you're going to do a manage your collection phase. Now, so a trade phase is pretty simple. Uh, if you want to do a trade with the comic shop, you can. If you want to trade with another player, you can. Um, when you trade with other players, you just trade one comic for one comic. And, but you can't trade for a comic that's in a collection. Um, once, and that's the, the third part of a turn. When you manage your collection, you'll put comics into different collections that you have. And uh, that's how you protect your comics. Because I guess the mentality here is that um, if you only have, like, say, one uh, Kids with Powers comic and somebody really wants it, uh, you'd be willing to trade that away. But if you have two or three or four of these Kids with Power comics, you're like, oh, I don't want to bust up that set, which, you know, thematically makes a lot of sense. All right, so the pick part is, is really simple. 
Uh, but it's a very challenging decision you have to make. So what happens is the person will go ahead and they'll pick up the first deck of the pick piles. And then you don't know what these cards are. Well, at first anyway. So in this case, we have a Grim, uh, like plus one, uh, Grim, Grim issue number one, uh, plus two victory points, it's a rare, and it kids with powers, uh, number four, common. Now, if I wanted to take these, what I would do is then I would just place them down in front of me. Now, you might be saying, well, the first player, they're going to put stuff down in front of them, and people are going to, like, try to trade and take those things away. Well, no, technically that's not going to happen because of the fact that nobody has any comics to trade that first round, so keep that in mind. If they decide to take those, they put them down in front, in front of them. If these, if, like, you had, you know, these, like, those are the two I grabbed, I could put that like that's the starting of a collection, you know, for for my two grim cards, you know, my two grim uh, comic books that are in there. Now, if I don't like this, I, I can say, you know what, I didn't, I don't want those. Uh, maybe I want some Captain Impossible cards because the Captain Impossible ones are going to be the ones that are going to be worth uh, the bonus points at the end. And plus, there's this really nice looking uh, one out there that I hopefully I can get first. And so here I would draw the next two. So now here we have, I finally got an anthology card. I'll let it come in focus. So the anthologies um, use as any missing issue of the series. So the anthologies then uh, are exactly that. When you are trying to put together your sets, you can't just say, I have three issues of number three malware, you know, and that's a set. Each one of those would be its each individual uh, set, right? But if an anthology can be used for anything, and so you can't you, you can't double up on the same comic over and over again uh, to, to qualify for extra points, but the anthologies obviously work really well for that. Now, I should mention that if we passed on this one, what you do then is you take a top card off the top and you place it on top of that pick pile, sight unseen. You don't know what that is. If you didn't want this one, you'll take one sight unseen and you'll place it on top of there like so and then so when you finally get to this one let's see what we got here well this is actually pretty cool so i have two captain impossible comics i have a number four and a number six this is sweet so like this is the bonus that's exactly what i wanted i i lucked out i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna put that there and then we're going to replace that pig pile like so with two face down and then the next person's gonna go uh, so what will happen then is that these pick piles obviously will will gain comics as the game goes on and then be depleted and then gain and deplete and gain. Uh, but um, as people like give up on the stuff that isn't worth it, a lot of games are like that where it's like you make um, the, the, the choice that nobody wants better and better until finally somebody actually takes it. And that's exactly what's going to happen with that. So um, then my turn's done because I've managed my collection. Now if you have a situation where you have a bunch of comics that you need to put together your sets, you can do that during your manager collection. It's just, you know, like a free action. You, you can just mess those up. Then each other player is going to take their turn and then it'll get back to me and now we can actually do like the trading and because I have comics or whatever. I probably wouldn't do any trading obviously because I have these two Captain Impossible and I want to keep them and this kind of stinks because I really wanted that Captain Impossible out there. I don't know how I'm going to get it because, you know, I don't want to trade any of these away. But those are some of the tough decisions that you're going to be making uh, as, as the game. Maybe I can just get a hold of an anthology of Captain Impossible. Oh, I should mention that if you go through all three of the pick piles and you don't like any of them, you get to the third one, you're like, ah, I don't like that one. You just draw two cards off the top of the deck and uh, sight unseen, and you, those are the two that you get. Notice how the comics that you get are never placed face down in front of you, they're always placed face up. Basically, so other players can know what they can trade with you for. So, you know, just make sure that um, you don't have anything. Uh, too tantalizing, as you will, for other players to, um, you know, get, you know, to to trade off of you and take from you. So just keep that in mind as the game progresses. Um, at the end of the round, you will. Uh, the end of the round happens when all of this deck is emptied, and then all three of these, uh, all three of the pick piles are gone. Once all the three of the pick piles and all these cards are gone, the end of the round happens. Uh, people will uh, total up any uh, extra victory points they get from having rare cards that have victory point totals on them. They will total up, uh, if anybody got the round bonus, you'll get that, and then you'll figure out what each set is worth. Now, you can have, you know, you could have, like, seven or eight Kids with Powers comics or what have you, and uh, you're just going to have to, like, each one of those would be a different set, and like you know, and if you ever notice how like a set of one uh, car, one uh, comic is zero, but like notice how uh, the manga here, like this guy right there, even if you just had this one, it would be still be worth two victory points, just because of the fact that it's a small set. 
Uh, once everybody's sold your victory points, um, you then will uh, basically shuffle all the comics back in. You're going to pick a new hot comic. Uh, remember the hot comics were bonus victory points, whoever has the most uh, most of those, so whoever had the most Captain Impossible comics that round, we get it. You would randomly pick one of these to be the next uh, hot comic. You would take everybody's secret power and you would hand out a new one, you'd figure out a new round bonus, and you'd just set up the trade piles and set up the pick piles again, and you'd go again. Game, pl game flow is very, very quick, very, very fast, but also has lots of really fun, tough decisions that you have to make along the way, something that I really, really like. But let me talk more about that uh, in my final thoughts. All right, so there you go. Uh, that is the Mint Condition comics. I hope you understand a pretty good idea of how to play, and I, and I, 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 I've kind of already said the stuff that I really liked about it. I really like the trading aspect. I like the fact that you need to get collections to protect those cards that you have. And like I said, the idea that like, oh, I don't want to get rid of this particular card or comic, you know, because of the fact that I have other comics like it. You know, it makes sense, right? It's like, oh, I don't want to bust up my set. I don't want to bust up my collection. Um, you know, so it's one of those things where uh, that makes a lot of sense as well. Um, the pick, the pick piles. I mean, that totally is a thing that my old, uh, my old comic book store used to have. Um, one of the things about comic books is that once you have a certain number of them, um, like you can't send them back. Uh, you, you. I mean, there used to be a situation, I, and I remember seeing this, and I might be misremembering this. But I remember, um, like, my old comic book story, I would watch them, and uh, they would actually, um, like, to get credit back from the publishers, from Marvel or DC or distributors or whatever, what they would do is they would cut the front cover off of the comic book so then they could send that back to the distributor and get credit back, you know, because, like, obviously the people wouldn't buy it without a cover. But, I mean, of course, like, me being the little kid that I was, I was more than willing, even though I was like, oh, I don't have the cover for this, I was more than willing uh, to just have the comic book itself. I mean, that might be just a weird memory, and maybe I'm, it's a false memory, but I remember having that, like, a real thing. Uh, and, and it was, like, something that was cool. Now, my understanding is, I, I have, um, I, I know a couple people who run comic book stores, is that um, you have to really really precise um with the, with the comics that you order because you'll end up having uh like large stacks of comics that don't sell and so like that's why when you go into comic book stores you see like those giant bins that are like you know uh, any five comics for a dollar or whatever they're just trying to get rid of them and so the pick pile thing is something that i would see because of the fact that it was just like one comic book store and this was an old comic book store called lantern comics that no longer exists um, they used to make these, like, basically, uh, like, the pig pile was basically this, these giant bins, and, and, and me and other kids would sit there, and we'd go through and go through and go through and find comics that interest us because um, the owner was just trying to get some money out of them, right? You know, because of the fact that it, at a certain point they're just collecting money and they're, they're sunk cost. And so I like the fact that those those pick piles, like when you're just digging through and digging through and digging through, because they would set up different collections. They wouldn't put like, oh, let's put all the really cool X-Men and Superman and Batman comics together. No, you had to like, if you wanted that Batman comic, you also had to, you know, get some comic that you had no interest in. And I'm not going to name a comic because somebody's out there is going to be like, hey, I like that comic, you know, and, uh, and I'll offend you. But like, so they had to like put um, titles that weren't as interesting uh, with the titles that they knew would sell just so they could get those comics out the door and get some money back on their investment. So I like that aspect as well. And finally, I like the whole... Um, like the, the trading with the comic book store. I never really sold my comics to, to, the, to the comic book store. Though in later um, uh, years, uh, when I've been like running out of room in my house, I've definitely started taking uh, stuff that I have that I, and, and, like, and this, this is very, very evident um, with my, my, my uh, board game collection, just basically because board games take a lot of space. I regularly trade away, trade or, or sell uh, board games um, that I no longer play. Uh, to um, either consignment stores or to friends or whatever, uh, just so I can get, even if it's like, you know, uh, you know, pennies on the dollar, it's just getting it out of my house and, and getting something back, right? So um, I did like the trading aspect as well. Now, as a whole, like I said, the game is just, it, it, it's clever, it's fun, and you can teach somebody in like five minutes. Um, and probably not even that. I mean, and I, I hate the word gateway game because it's like, 
you know, it's like, I don't even think gateway games really exist anymore. I mean, as far as like the board game hobby goes, people are getting more and more excited and more and more interested in what we do. And they're having a lot of fun um, uh, playing our, our board games. But this is definitely one of those things where um, you could go up to your, your comic book collecting friends or just your like friends that collect things, whether they're Pokemon cards or magic cards or... Um, you know, sports cards. I'm sure people still collect sports cards, right? Um, you can go up to those people and uh, you could present this game as a, as, a, as a really good way to spend a half hour, 40 minutes of just challenging you and your and the other players at the table of trying to like make sure, uh, like just give them to get the most points, but also just to have a, a focal point of like having a reason why everybody's at the table and having a good time as well, which I it obviously um, is the point of, of games like this where the, where the fun is there um, and and the, and the fun decisions are there but the um, like the the as far as like getting into the rules and getting into the game it doesn't take too much of an investment so now the focus can be on the people and your friends and your family at the table uh, enjoying each other's company and the the game itself is this this fun um, aspect of, of that of that situation as well so there you go if you have any questions about min condition comics by all means ask away I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can as always thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video remember be the most awesome version of you that you possibly can be I guarantee you, uh, the more love that you give the universe, the more love the universe is going to give back to you. Until next time, I'm the Unknown Viking, and you, yes you, you're awesome.